Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Am Christina D'Arcangelo. And today I have a very special guest, Dan, who's joined us to talk about various things that he's been working on and things that are important to him. So I am going to hand off the baton, so to speak, to Dan so that he can open it up, give you a background, <laughs> and let him start on this journey with us. Well, thank you, Dan. Me. Well, thank you for having me. Um, Dan Mangena, born and raised in East London in the UK. For the most part, I call Carbo Mexico home, although I do escape during the summer. And uh, day by day, what I get to enjoy the process of doing is supporting people and connecting to the idea that abundance is our natural state. It's not something that we have to hustle and claw for. It's something that we get the opportunity to reconnect to every day. Which is awesome. I love that because I ran into you on LinkedIn because we popped up, one of us popped up somehow, and maybe it's mm -hmm. because we align so much on abundance and, you know, not, not putting these weird things out to the in universe and not getting things that you want back in life. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, you know, how we ended up kind of weaving together. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I know that I have always appreciated your post for that very reason, because you'll talk about stuff that's very raw, just like I talk about. And in LinkedIn, LinkedIn, it's a little, <laughs> right? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, let's talk about how to be a billionaire in yeah. five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all that stuff, right? And yeah. uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not that person, you know. And like, mm -hmm. I get, I get very aggravated too. Like, I don't know if this happens to you. But mm -hmm. it happens to me where I show up on a meeting or it's an interview or something and somebody makes a comment to me. Ah, I don't know. I would say eight times out of 10 where they make mm -hmm. some sort of wealth comment to me, a wealth mm -hmm. comment. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why are they saying these things to me? Because I don't come out showing like I'm wealthy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, when you came on today, did, did I like start talking about like wealth or anything? No, mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. doesn't, does it even make sense? Mm -hmm. Cause that's not where I come from. I mean, there's a, there's a line, um, there's a line. I don't remember where, it, where I got it from. I think it might be something that Cosimo Medici used to say, which is a truly wealthy man laden down, not his pockets with gold. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, Margaret Thatcher was always quoted as saying, if you're a lady you don't have to tell people like if you have to tell people you're not a lady right right and th there's a confidence that comes from being who and what you are without the need to get the validation of people and for the most part you know people are trying to fake it till you make it stuff and they're mm -hmm. trying to project and to put it out but when you're doing it you're doing it you don't really need to talk to me no I'm just getting on with it no yeah. and it's like listen if you really yeah. knew who I was you would recognize yeah. that I grew up blue collar I eat mm -hmm. poor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like, what are you talking about? And all the schooling and everything that I've done, I'm self-made. I paid mm -hmm. for it myself. I worked for everything I have. So I don't mm -hmm. understand where, because I guess my father died and 15 people think I got a golden parachute because he was a turnpike guy and a teamster. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That didn't happen though. Like mm -hmm. everything I have I did myself, you know, I worked mm -hmm. for it. Nobody gave me yeah. anything. So I hate mm -hmm. when I show up and people make these comments. Well, well, you've got it. You've got the money. You could donate to blah, 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 that blah, 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 whatever it is mm -hmm. that they want. And I'm like, hold on, time out. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. a nonprofit that mm -hmm. works for people for free. So mm -hmm. who do you think supports that? Mm -hmm. DD. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. You know? Yeah, but I think, but I mean, people are going to be who people are going to be. They're going to say what they're going to say. They're going to do what they're going to do. I think one of the gifts is to be able to stand in the face of those inputs and to be able to know who you are, like you. For like, mm -hmm. Okay, you've got that to say, but I know who I am. I mm -hmm. don't need to join you on the validation train. Mm -mm. I can just rock on and be myself, mm -hmm. be CD in all my fabulousness. That's right. It. And that's one of the things I loved about you, because as I've been watching you for some time before I invited you on my podcast, <laughs> I was trying to learn, like, what is it? Like, what's mm -hmm. because I have to be careful, obviously, as mm -hmm. to who I have on my show 
because mm-hmm. I can't have people that are not going to align with my thread, you know, yeah, of who I, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And who I am as a person. So when it happens, I just ignore it and move on. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever they're saying, you know, cause it's kind of like, Mm-hmm. And embarrassing so like mm-hmm. i don't always show up to podcasts looking like this you've seen my other mm-hmm. podcasts i just happened to have do i had to do press today so mm-hmm. that's listen i like wearing hoodies and 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 nike and all that <laughs> stuff all the time you know <laughs> I'm, but that's but, that, but but that's being you you're being who you are in the moment you're not leading into um you're not playing up to an idea you're not playing up to uh, a narrative you're just being you and I think if more people were focusing on how to more deeply be who they are than how to pretend to be someone else you'd probably get to where you want to be and I would also say and hopefully you agree and you can disagree with me but I just Mm -hmm. had this discussion with one of my friends who I've known for more than two decades we grew up together in the biotech industry my first my second job in the industry I worked for Johnson and Johnson and that's where we met and I Mm -hmm. love I love, love, love my one friend. I mean, I love a lot of my friends from that. Yeah, but from that, for this one we're talking about. <laughs> this, yeah, we were talking today about this and we were talking mm-hmm. about like things that happened in the past and stuff. And he made a comment about something I did back in the day. And, you know, I was in my mid to early to mid twenties back then. Um, mm-hmm. And I said, listen, um, I didn't love myself then, didn't. Mm-hmm. Stop loving Mm. myself a long time ago. And then, you know, started loving myself not too long ago again. So Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of times when people don't love themselves, truly, 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 truly love themselves for who they are, they emulate things, right? And it's Mm. things that they see in others that they want that they don't Mm -hmm. have, right? So I kind of look at this when people say this stuff to us about wealth and whatever they think we're doing, um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) they're perceiving as reality. It's mm-hmm. because there's things they're lacking, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I'm i happy to talk about it from that position, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, what is it that's making you sad, you know, mm-hmm. or what is it? <laughs> Who, hurt is, you? Who, hurt, is, Who hurt you? Who hurt you? Yeah, like, you know, yeah. and this is stuff I learned over the years, Dad. I used to be big, bad DR when I was coming up in the pharma industry, and I had no time for nonsense, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. after I had my son in 13, it made me a better professional because now I'm mothering this little mm-hmm. human, and I learned how to mother him, right, through this mm-hmm. journey. And I've kind of done that with my career now, like where I kind of be, have become this whatever. And I mean, nothing disrespectful to to my gender when I say mother I just mean like because I'm a parent and Uh I've recognized some things that have been very helpful in my career (laughs) because Uh I'm a parent Uh 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 I'm same I'm a dad my son's going to be turning two in December and um patience um one of the biggest baddest lessons I I love that I got was I came home from the office one day and he waved at me when I walked through the door I was like, when did he learn to do that? And then I realized <laughs> I don't remember learning how to wave. Nobody gave him the instruction. He just learned. And it gave me so much compassion for myself and others because when someone's being a toe rag or being a douche or whatever, <laughs> they may not be they may not be aware of the programming that came in that created the foundation and basis for that. They could mm-hmm. have been a little baby too, right? Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff that I do that I'm like, I want to work on this, I want to change it, I want to heal it. I may not have been aware and present to when that was coming in too. And it just gave me so much compassion for myself and others. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing that's really important is for uh-huh. people to accept themselves for who they uh-huh. are, you know, uh-huh. and like, listen, if there's things that you need to improve upon, uh-huh. you get feedback, listen, that's uh-huh. your best thing you can do is to listen. Don't block it off, uh-huh. you know, Listen to what they're saying, because I'm telling you, if you listen, you're going to learn a lesson. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. There's so much that's available for us to learn. Like uh, one thing I always love to say is everything can be your teacher when you allow anything to be your teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like There's lessons available from everything, from everyone, maybe even people that you didn't think you were going to learn from. I didn't think I was going to learn from my then 13 month year old baby. Such a profound lesson about compassion. But I was open to it, and so it came through. Mm -hmm. Even animals. Like, think Mm -hmm. about interacting with animals, you know? Mm -hmm. You learn so much, even Mm -hmm. from animals. Like, 
you know, our dog, we have two golden doodles and uh-huh. they're minis and they're puppies. So like Angelo has a DR Angelo. Angelo uh-huh. is turning a one in November 2nd. And then Gucci, she's will not turn one until next June. So they're close kind of an age, these two uh-huh. puppies and they're best friends now. Uh-huh. Not in the beginning, but Angelo has anxiety. The dog has oh. anxiety. And with breeding, you've got to be careful. Like sometimes this happens, you know, where they have anxiety. And Angelo is a blue Merrill. So with just even that alone, I've raised my eyebrow a little bit. Like, did something happen crossbred? I don't know. But the poor guy has anxiety. So oh. I, as a human, I have anxiety and my son has anxiety. So now the dog, you know, here we have this little, we have a puppy that has anxiety. So when I figured this out, I took him to the vet to confirm because I'm not a vet. I do clinical oh. research. I advocate for patients. I think I'm kind of smart at this stuff, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I've got a good idea, but I'm going to seek professional opinion. <laughs> exactly. So again, let me talk to somebody and listen to what they tell yeah. me. So yeah. they they confirm our boy Angelo has anxiety. Okay, mm-hmm. so now we're working through this. So I come home, my son comes home from school, and I'd let him know, Christian, Angelo has anxiety. So let's talk about how we can support Angelo with his anxiety. And what was amazing was to hear him talk, my son later on talking to Angelo by himself. And he's like, Angelo it's okay that you don't always feel okay because sometimes oh. I don't feel like that either. Oh. And you know, mommy, sometimes, you know, sometimes mommy is anxious too. And it's okay. Cause we're all like that, you know? Oh. So you just need to relax and lay down and come for a pet and we'll give you a pet. And then you can oh. go do what you need, have a drink of water. And so I was like, wow, you're nine and a half, like, holy cow. Like he really uh-huh. is paying attention Uh 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 look how much we learn Uh, right when anything when everything can be our teacher anything can be our teacher even the story now me learning from small child and the dog right (laughs) communication (laughs) compassion right (laughs) maddest combination (laughs) who believe it on a wednesday afternoon Right, but it's happening. You know what I mean? (laughs) But if we were on LinkedIn, people would be like, what are they doing? (laughs) Oh, that's right. She works in cannabis. She must have like smoked at a bong or something before. I don't smoke. I'm not a cannabis consumer like that. I'm medicinal. (laughs) So there's there's a big difference. Different feel, different feel. Different (laughs) completely. Like we're not hugging like, no, that doesn't work that way. It's a medicine for me. That's how I live. Even recreational people, it's a medicine for them. Come on, Dan, you're going to tell me that they don't take cannabis so they can calm down. Of course Uh they do. Obviously, Uh they've got something going on that they need to calm down for. So that's Uh why they're doing it. So in my opinion, recreational is medicinal as well. (laughs) Uh 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 It's all working together. We're working together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh So that's why I'm making that dig about cannabis, because I get all kinds of digs like you know, because I work in this space, I've been in it for six years, you know, next year I'll be going on seven. And so it's like, I run clinical studies. Like, <laughs> I don't I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not smoking with Mary. Was it Mary Jane? Mary Jane. Mary, Mary, yes. Mary Jane, that's the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I put it just crazy. Like the perception, like I'm bringing this uh-huh. up because not to turn this into a cannabis discussion, I'm just bringing up things that I've seen in my career and when we just to tie it back to when we came out you know the gates talking about linkedin some Mm -hmm. of the things that people assume about us Mm -hmm. that's not always right yeah not always right not always correct not always true and that's okay and it's okay i mean Mm -hmm. it's okay we're different for a reason and we embrace Mm -hmm. our our you know our differences but we embrace the things that pull us together right like uh-huh. we have certain things that we align on that people uh-huh. are already picking up uh-huh. <laughs> in this brief you know 10 minute discussion that we've had thus far exactly exactly and that's okay too and that's okay too yeah so tell me a little bit about your career 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that people mm-hmm. can understand. Because I know that sometimes people look at things they don't really understand. They're like, I don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, he's everywhere. He's always in yeah. my feed. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. She's always in yeah. my feed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've only actually, in terms of corporate, I've never really had a corporate job. I've never had a suit and tie job. I worked in a cinema when I was 15 for a summer. And then when I was in my, uh, the, the, about three quarters away through my twenties, I worked in a call center for six months as I was starting a new business and I needed some money to cover the bills while I could focus on building out the business. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always sort of been been out there doing things for myself. And um, that's been in various fields, uh, consultancy. I've got a media investment business. We're doing some media production now as well. Um, uh, do some stuff in agriculture and, and other bits and pieces too but I mean all of these things are fun projects that I want to be in that generally have got some kind of impact component so with the agriculture we reinvest in local communities in the developing world um, so we go into an, a community we invest locally we go into joint ventures with some of the landowners and then we reinvest locally that's one of the things that's important to me but yeah but the the, the, the personal development side of things that people probably see me speaking about more on my podcast when I'm writing for entrepreneur and everything like that that's really service driven for me it's something that I don't necessarily have to do but I do enjoy doing and just a way to leave a bit more of a positive mark in the world really I think it's amazing that you do that um, because we choose to do that when we write, yeah. you know, like mm, mm-hmm. I, I think I, uh, I write every month for CEO world magazine and mm-hmm. cause I have one sitting in my queue because my head mm-hmm. of, of PR is like, yeah, better get it done. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a, in my queue of things to do, but I enjoy writing those things because it's my way of sharing with mm. the world whatever it is that I decide to talk about, you know, at that given Mm -hmm. month, you know, this month in October, this is always a tough month um, because this is my dad's death anniversary month of seven years. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. just happened last uh, Thursday. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so we kind of like from the nonprofit side, we kind of lift up for that. And then now with the brand, it's like, okay, well, I can talk about my dad a little bit more now. So it doesn't look so odd, you know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> when we talk about it from a corporate, because it's like, well, why is she talking? Well, because there's so many pearls of wisdom that mm. my my dad taught me, you know, as a kid that's made me who I am today, right? And like, mm. you know, you know, because you get in these these uh, press clips where people have you on, like we're on today, but I don't do what other people do where they hammer hammer Mm -hmm. hammer and they want to know what's going on and you can talk about some of that stuff sometimes but you know doing your own thing and being an entrepreneur you really get to say whatever you want to say you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) living your own life living your own life that's right and you know we're Mm -hmm. we're not fearful of judgment like it's Mm -hmm. like whatever just let Mm -hmm. it roll off your back because you know who you are, you know, your, Mm -hmm. your foundation, and you just have to stand firm in that and not sway. Mm -hmm. You can't sway when you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People can't move you unless you're ready to be moved. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's true. It's interesting to see what happens with people, isn't it? When you sit back and you really watch and see what it is that they're willing to share with you when they show up Mm -hmm. for something. And for me, I always use that as an opportunity to reflect on what's going on with me. Yeah. So if something shows up and I find myself being called to judge or have an opinion about it, I always look inwards and say, okay, what part of me is, uh, is being triggered by what's going on? What part of me um, is being shown that it's ready to heal because of what I'm seeing in front of me. And what part of me is just, being demonstrated to, to be a little bit twatty that needs to be dressed because of what's showing up in front of me. And that becomes quite a fun game rather than it being a, a self, you know, self-flagellating experience. It becomes a growth, a growth point. I love that you said that because, you know, as I've gotten older over the years and I've watched certain things happen in my personal life and I've reached out for help, you know, from mm-hmm. certain people professional wise, because I mean, come on, you can't, you could do so much, but you need help at times and you've got to mm-hmm. ask for help. And, you mm-hmm. know, I did some NLP last year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then I did another session about two weeks ago. Cause I just, I felt like I needed it because again, yeah, top up. 
something got into my face and it had nothing, oh. nothing, nothing to do. It just got in my face and it made me think, uh oh, I'm not done with that. I'm not done with that. So now I need to, for me personally, I have to hit it head on to fix mm-hmm. it, to fix this because otherwise I know I will not be productive with that issue unless I go in and I try to fix it. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to do some NLP because talk therapy only gets you so far. You need mm-hmm. the NLP so that you can reset the subconscious that in my opinion. And mm-hmm. so this was all new for me, you know, like I'm a clinical research person. So it's like, okay, well, wait a second, let's see what we can, but it got to a point where it's like, nah, nah, nah. This is what I need to do. And I'm so glad that I did because I'll tell you, I've seen such a big shift with this thing that happened two weeks ago. It's been amazing. Was it painful? Oh, yes. (laughs) I mean, I could in vitro see stuff like in my mom's, you know, in in the womb. And that's Mm -hmm. not fun. That's not fun sometimes, you know, when you go all the Mm -hmm. way back to that. Um, Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm glad I did it because I can now share. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is something I did. It's not for everybody, but for me, this is something for me. This is why I did this. Something transformative and impactful for you. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of mm-hmm. dovetailed off of what you said, where it was like, listen, this is in front of my face for a reason. I'm supposed to look at something internally to figure out what it is that I need to revise. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so I love that you do that because not everybody does that. They think that they're mm-hmm. fine. They're fine all the time. Nobody's mm-hmm. fine all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and nobody has to be fine all the time. No, it's okay to be sad or upset mm-hmm. or whatever it is or 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 missing somebody. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to talk about it. You don't have to sit here quietly. You know, Mm -hmm. I know that, well, I can guess that sometimes your quotes are things that you want to discuss, like you want to come Mm -hmm. out and talk about. I do the same thing. We both Mm -hmm. write our own quotes. It's not somebody Mm -hmm. writing for us. It's my stuff. Yeah. And you can Mm -hmm. tell if you listen to us that that's our stuff. And it's Mm -hmm. a way for us to share ourselves with people, things that Mm -hmm. have troubled us or things that we've recognized. It's all ways of passing lessons learned because we've learned that way over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing is that um, whenever I say anything to somebody, I'm speaking to myself first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm always speaking to myself first. Because if I can't receive it, it's not going to transmit anywhere else. But if I'm living it, it's going to transmit where it's going with a lot more power and potency. Mm-hmm. I absolutely, absolutely agree. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I think we, it's always starting with yourself first <laughs> and, and figuring out, okay, all right, so I need to focus on this today, you know, or whatever it is. Or even if it's just something for five minutes, if it's doing some sort of mindful meditation to just take a break. Mm-hmm. Okay take the break. There's no reason why you can't take the break. Nobody is looking to see if you're clocking in and out over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's five minutes. Take a five minute mm-hmm. break when you need take it. A break. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> well, we have zipped through the time. It's already, I mean, look at it. <laughs> We're nearing to the end already. I'm sorry that, but I try to keep it, you know, at a certain uh, amount of time. So I, mm-hmm want to thank you for being on today and just talking about some of the pearls of wisdom that you can share with our listeners and our viewers so that maybe, you know, they don't take themselves as seriously at times. Well, I always like to say there's no point taking life too seriously because none of us are getting out of it alive. No, you're right. And if, Mm -hmm. if, you know, two years ago when all this stuff happened across the country, across the world, across all the different climates that should teach us, (laughs) Mm -hmm. a lot of things anytime that's right and we need to be thankful Mm -hmm. for where we are today great Great. (laughs) well thank you so much for being on the show i really appreciate it you being on and you know as we always say remember we are the same i am christina d'arcangelo thank you